and there's yeah, a lot of surfing going on there. Sheldon taking off deep behind the pocket once again. He's going to get spat out. Stop number one on the Challenger Series. I'm Kaipo on the Harvey Norman host set along with Felicity Palmentier and 78 world champ Robert Bartholomew. Uh, when we went to break, Bugs were talking about coming off of stop number five on the championship tour. We lost some championship tour surfers. We had a number of surfers who have been relegated to this Challenger Series. Yeah, and I mean, they've arrived here with a real sting in the tail. I mean, first of all, they're very battle-hardened about you know, from coming off those fir f five really furious CT events. Now they've arrived in the, in the friendly waters of Snapper Rocks and they're going to be met by a pack. Let's take a look at the list, Flick, of uh, the surfers relegated to this Challenger Series not making the cut. Yeah, on the list we've got uh, Samuel Pupo. I mean, he was sitting around that line. And unfortunately, he didn't make it. We've got Nat Young, amazing surfer, really powerful backhand. Jackson Baker, I feel like he's been doing some really good surfing, but just unfortunately, his results not quite reflecting that. We've got M Miguel Pupo and Kelly Slater. Kelly Slater, obviously the really big name here, but he did get himself a wild card, and as well as Miguel Pupo. We've got uh, Emrod, Michael Rodriguez, and over uh, the right, we've got Maxine Husno, Jake Marshall, Kolohe and Dino, another big name. Yeah, so a couple of names right there, Maxine Husno, Jake Marshall. Uh, you know, rookie season on the championship tour, not able to make that cut, but they do have an opportunity um, here on the Challenger se Series. Uh, Kolohe and Dino, there was a surprise to me that he did not make that cut. He's always been a top performer, especially here, Bugs. You know, on the Gold Coast, Kaloy and Dino, he's been runner-up twice here, 2016 and 2019. Yeah, I mean, at the at the top tier, and and Kaloy, he's just he's surfing. He's built for Snapper Rocks. You know, you know, it comes from lowers down there and uh, at trestles. And look at the way he surfs his wave. He's he's right at home. And uh, yeah, looking for a big result from Kolohe for sure. Yeah, Kolohe and Dino, husband, family man, got the whole family in tow over here on the beautiful Gold Coast. I'm expecting big things uh, from this surfer here at Snapper Flick. Yeah, I feel like he hasn't really been on a roll for a while and he sort of needs to find that momentum again. I feel obviously he's had two real, you know, two final series out here and you know maybe this is the place that he finds that momentum again and look out if he does because I feel like he's almost going to be unstoppable out here. Yeah, I mean, I feel for Kaloi, we can see these moments in the past and that success that he can draw from. I feel he just had a weird season, a weird rhythm on the championship tour because he's surfing better than ever, you know, uh, Kaloi and Dino. Another surfer to talk about that's been surfing really, really well on the challenge, on the championship tour. I'm sorry, Bugs, but, um, but had some weird heats as far as interferences and weird headspace. We're talking about Ezekiel Lau. Yeah, I know. That was a, a strange uh, trip through both, um, you know, in Hawaii even. Uh, but the one thing about Zeke is that on this um, Challenger Series, he not only has done well, but he's won. He knows how to win these things. And, and they've, they've been the foundations for him requalifying. Yeah, he's made it through here. Uh, on Challenger Series and Qualifying Series a couple of times, Flick, and a lot of that is just his consistency when he gets back into this Challenger Series and how he's able to put, put up big results. Taking a win at Arisar in 2021, 2022 he took a win at the US Open there in Huntington Beach. Yeah, I guess when I think Zeke, I mean, look at this serving here, I think powerful, I think strong, and I really think that he deserves to have a spot on tour. I think, you know, later on in the week, we're going to see the waves get a bit bigger and look out because if the waves don't push, I mean, Zeke is uh, definitely your man. Yeah, we open up with four-man heats here on the Challenger Series, Bugs, and the one thing I can say about Ezekiel Lau is he knows how to adapt to those four-man heats. He knows how to surf in that, you know, a lot of CTers coming in here haven't surfed, the, if you, especially if you're a veteran championship tour surfer, you haven't surfed a lot of four-man heats. That, Ezekiel Lau is not one of those surfers. He's surfed a lot of those. And, and so I, I think his heat IQ in those four-man heats will be outstanding. Yeah, he's had a, a really a seamless adjustment. But the one thing about Zeke is that you can see him coming from deep in the draw. Yeah. You know, talk about an unstoppable force. Once he gets the momentum going, he knows, and he knows how, to, how to close out a final. Yeah, he's a passionate surfer. Well, that's the men. Same thing happened. Stop number five at Margaret River for the women. We saw, saw some of our championship tour surfers relegated to the Challenger Series. Yeah, we, we've got some veterans in Sally uh, Fitzgibbon and uh, Courtney Conlog. I mean, they have won many numerous events over illustrious careers. Uh, and they're just two of those that have uh, been relegated. But we've also, uh, you know, Isabella Nichols, uh, she won last year in your home break. 
uh, Flick and, you know, Macy Callahan, Sophie McCulloch. Of course, Brissa and Joanne have got uh, wild cards, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just crazy. These Some of these women here we're so used to seeing in that top five, top ten conversation. And to see women like Sally and Courtney, who are veterans, fall off tour, you know, it's a, it's it's disappointing for them. But it's also exciting for us because we get to see them here today, you know, at Snapper. Yeah, we're going to see uh, those surfers. Uh, one surfer I want to talk a little bit about is Macy Callan. She, you know, fell off last year, uh, was relegated to the Challenger Series after mid-season cut. She's in the same situation this year, Felicity. But in 2022, Macy, she was able to fight back. She made three back-to-back -back finals on the Challenger Series and easily re-qualified for the championship tour. Yeah, I, look, Macy's surfing is exceptional, and it seems to me, I mean, when she lost at Margaret River, there was a lot of emotion behind that. You could clearly see that that's not where she wants to be, but she seems to surf on the Challenger Series with this sort of confidence, um, which she doesn't maybe quite have on the CT yet. But yeah, look, three back-to-back -back finals. She's got an amazing backhand, which we can see here, and, she, you know, that go-to forehand, forehand carve, which, you know, she really relies on. Yeah, Bugs the strength. I think is the versatility of Macy Callahan. Doing it in Bolito, doing it at the US Open, and even here, right hand point over at Aracera. Yeah, well, we just saw some good backhand surfing on Macy. Her surfing is absolutely tailor made for these Gold Coast point breaks. And she's won out here at Snapper Rocks in, in different categories, so she's going to feel right at home. Yeah, this is going to be one of the surfers that, you know, will have a, in a way, a home court advantage bugs because she spends a lot of time surfing here yeah no she does i mean you know this is her home i mean she's um re you know relocated here years ago and uh gosh she you know you see her out at surfing snapper and there's a very high level of surfing out here and macy's a standout yeah macy's a standout i want the young upcoming surfers we got another young upcoming surfer i feel and and maybe you know a glimpse into the future of women's professional surfing in the way of sophie mcculloch flick yeah, uh, look, Sophie, she had a crazy task ahead of her at the end of the year on the Challenger Series. She came into Halieva, she needed to win, and she did. She surfed so amazing, and, you know, that's a hard task ahead of you. So to get in the right mindset, to get a result like that, that is big. And then, unfortunately, you know, she came on tour and she sustained an ankle injury before the tour even started. Um, but one thing I really I, I looked at um, of her results on the championship tour is, you know, every time she lost, uh, when she came back from Portugal, she got a fifth in Portugal. She lost to Katie, who went on to win it. She got a ninth at Bells, who lost to Molly, who got second. And then she got a ninth at, uh, to Carissa, who went on to win. So it's not as if her surfing isn't there. She's just drawing hard opponents. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, not being able to be in those first two events of, of the season, Really stung for Sophie McCulloch, but Bugs, I feel she's the one to keep an eye on here at the Superbank. Oh, well, you know, Sophie's uh, rookie season was abbreviated by injury. Uh, I think it's just a minor roadblock. I mean, she just got, she's got youth on her side, but also she's just got this aggressive approach. You know, she attacks a lip. You know, for her to do that at Holly Eva was amazing. And, uh, you know, she's, again, I've seen her out at Snapper. She's, she's cooking. All right, well, we've got a lot of talent here boiling over. And this is just the first stop of the Challenger Series. Let's take a look at the schedule. Six events coming up, Flick, and uh, we're starting here on the Gold Coast, but we got a lot of fireworks uh, upcoming in the year. Yeah, that's right. We start on the Gold Coast, and then we stay in Australia. We move down to Sydney, the Sydney Surf Pro, and we've got that at Narrabeen, and then it travels across the globe. We go to South Africa at the Bolido Pro. We've got the US Open of Surfing, and then we move to Portugal. We've got another right-hand point break there at Iracira, and finishing off in Brazil in Sacarema. Yeah, and, and Bugs, I'm saying when we look at this schedule, we're talking about you need to be versatile as a surfer to qualify. Yeah, that's right. We were talking about the versatility because there's a lot of different conditions there. There's some you know, grandstand events like Huntington Beach when you're surfing in front of 50,000 people. Aracera, that's a, a pretty challenging wave. And, of course, looking forward to North Narrabeen and Sakurima to finish up. Um, yeah, that's going to be some hometown advantage for the Brazilians. Yeah, well, let's talk about quickly some sleeper picks uh, for the Challenger Series to qualify for the championship tour. I'm going to start with you, Bugs. Well, gosh, the field is unbelievable. But I, I, I'm, I, I'm looking at a few guys. I think Crosby Colapinto will be interesting to watch this year. Young surfer from Hawaii, Eli Henneman. He's, uh, you know, in his second year. And then this uh, young guy from New Zealand, Kihu Butler. Um, uh, he's, a, he's a really, his, his attitude is such a strong one. In the women's, you know, I, I, there's a, a lot that I don't know, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to a couple of young Hawaiians. So Evie Wong and Pua DeSoto. 
to want to see how they go at it, Snapper. Uh, all right, quick one, Flick, your picks. Uh, look, I'm not being biased, but I am going to go with my West Aussies. I've got Jacob Wilcox for the men and Bronte McCauley. I mean, Bronte's coming off that momentum from Margaret River. She's had a semi-final finish, not to mention she also won down in Newcastle. And um, she's had a lot of success out here in the past. All right. Well, I, th- I like your picks. A um, couple of my picks. I'm going to stick with, uh, I like Eve Wong and Empua DeSoto. That's just a hometown pick for me. But I really like uh, Kauli Voss and Mateus Hurdy as we look at the men's field. Hey, check worldsurfleague.com for all of the updates.